Hi, welcome back to Bun Med, where we discuss concise medical knowledge that you can fit inside a bun. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, and we'll be looking um, and focusing on the clinical aspect of these two conditions using two cases, and this should all tie quite nicely together with our previously covered physiology videos on clotting. So, um, let's get straight into it. For the first case, we have a 68-year-old woman presenting to a &E with a two-day history of unilateral pain in her right calf. There was no preceding trauma or injury to the leg. It does seem to be quite swollen compared to the other leg, and she uses a wheelchair normally to mobilize due to her arthritis. She also reports having hypertension and was recently treated for pneumonia two weeks ago requiring hospital admission of seven days. On examination, she has a swollen tender right calf with localized erythema and pitting edema. Four centimeter difference was noticed between her two calves and her BMI is reported to be 32. So feel free to pause the video here and think about what the patient has and how you would proceed with confirming the diagnosis. Right, so I'm sure it's really no surprise to everyone that the patient is uh, suspected to have DVT. Before we move on to investigations and treatment, here are some clinical features you may expect. Although the classical definition is the development of a clot in the deep veins of the leg, it is also important to just be aware of that DVTs aren't limited to the lower leg. They can also affect veins in the pelvis, thigh, abdomen, etc. And um, in terms of the signs and symptoms a patient may have, uh, unilateral leg pain is quite common. And this pain is usually described as a throbbing or cramping pain, or almost like a uh, dull ache in nature. And it's particularly bad when walking or bearing weight on the affected limb. Leg swelling, edema, prominent superficial veins, tenderness, erythematous and warm are also uh, some signs you may see when you examine the patient. In terms of the risk factors, uh, recent or current hospitalization, active cancer, recent trauma or surgery, old age, pregnancy, coagulopathies, uh, a patient taking the oral contraceptive pill that contains estrogen, uh, hormone replacement therapy, previous uh, VTE or um, venous thromboembolisms, uh, high BMI, smoking, long distance flights, uh, reduced impaired um, mobility, or a family history of something similar. Before we move on to the treatment and medications given for DVT, patients are scored using the two-level DVT well score, and management very much depends on the score you receive. So using the table below, identifying the clinical features such as active cancer, whether that's ongoing, uh, previously treated in the past six months, or palliative, paralysis, paresis, or recent plaster of the legs, recent uh, bedridden three days or more, major surgery within the previous 12 weeks requiring anesthesia, local tenderness along the distribution of the leg veins, and if the entire leg is swollen uh, or the calf swelling is more than three centimeters compared to the asymptomatic leg. And this is measured 10 centimeters below the tibial tuberosity, just as a landmark. Pitting edema of the symptomatic leg, uh, collateral superficial veins that are non-varicose in nature, previous DVT, and alternative diagnosis considered at, the, at least as likely as DVT, you would subtract uh, two points from the total score. So a score of two or more uh, is uh, DVT is likely, and a score of one or less, DVT is said to be unlikely. So at this point, feel free to pause the video and calculate the 68-year-old lady's well score uh, from the table and from case one, and uh, leave a comment in the video below. Okay, so moving on to management of DVT. Uh, the management here is in line with NICE 2020 guidance, and DVT falls under what is known as a VTE, as I mentioned previously, which is, a, in simple terms, a clot developing in the deep veins. And in order to treat this, uh, you would prescribe anticoagulants to prevent propagation of this clot. So, uh, in accordance to the well score that we uh, mentioned before, patients are uh, categorized into likely having a DVT or unlikely, and for patients who have a score of two or more, uh, you would offer a proximal leg vein ultrasound scan, aiming for results 
uh, to be available within four hours. If results uh, cannot be given within four hours, uh, patients are then given a D-dimer test, uh, an interim uh, therapeutic anticoagulation, and uh, another ultrasound uh, aiming for results to be available within 24 hours. Patients unlikely to have DVT, you would offer a D-dimer test uh, with results, again, uh, ideally available within four hours. If D-dimer results are not available within four hours, you would offer therapeutic anticoagulation and if a D-dimer is positive, you would then um, proceed to doing a proximal leg vein ultrasound and offer therapeutic anticoagulation if results are not obtained within four hours. So four hours really is the key uh, cutoff point. And if D-dimer is negative, consider a alternative diagnosis and stop any anticoagulation that may have been started. Okay. In terms of anticoagulation to use, uh, NICE suggests using apixaban or rivaroxaban first line, and these two drugs are classed under DOACs, so direct oral anticoagulants, and in terms of second line treatment, low molecular weight heparin for at least five days, then followed by dibigatran or adoxaban, or uh, low molecular weight heparin for at least five days with uh, vitamin K antagonist, such as warfarin. So it's important to also know the uh, monitoring requirements and some uh, baseline blood tests that you do. So I've listed a few. So baseline FBCs, Usenes, LFTs, and also coagulation studies such as uh, prothrombin time, activated partial uh, thromboplastin time as well. And in, if patients are put on vitamin K antagonists such as warfarin, you would have a warfarin target of uh, an INR of 2.5. Or, or between two and three. So in terms of monitoring, uh, patients are divided again into uh, having a provoked DVT or a unprovoked DVT. So um, a provoked DVT essentially means patients uh, have an identified transient risk factor that may have caused their, uh, their DVT. So this may be immobility, surgery, trauma, pregnancy, or taking the oral contraceptive pill. And uh, for patients under this category, you would uh, treat them with the anticoagulant therapy for at least three months. And for patients with an unprovoked DVT, so you can't really find any identifiable risk factors uh, that are persistent and not easily correctable, um, you would treat them for at least three more months, so six months in total. And NICE also suggests that you would investigate for malignancy and also investigate for any thrombophilias. For um, pregnant women, low molecular weight heparin are the drugs of choice for both DVT and PE. Okay, moving on to differentials. It's important to note again that um, roughly a third of patients who are suspected to have DVT actually have DVT. So it's, it's quite a small proportion. And um, in terms of uh, the differentials are split into three categories, physical trauma, so um, anything musculoskeletal, calf muscle tear, Achilles tendon tear, calf muscle hematoma or fracture, uh, although you usually would have some clinical history that points to that uh, in terms of a differential. Cardiovascular disorders, so superficial thrombophlebitis, post-thrombotic syndrome, vasculitis, heart failure. Other causes include um, cellulitis, which is a really important differential to know, uh, and ruptured Baker cysts, lymphatic obstruction, septic arthritis, cirrhosis, nephrotic syndrome, compartment syndrome. In terms of some complications that patients may have, uh, post-thrombotic syndrome is something that uh, affects up to 50% of patients within two years, and some of the symptoms include pain, swelling, skin changes, itching, and ulceration. Bleeding is also quite an important complication to know, and that's usually due to anticoagulant therapy. Um, so that also may exacerbate any previous underlying unknown um, pathologies, such as uh, if a patient had a gastric ulcer, uh, that could be exacerbated. Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia 
is also something quite important to be aware of. And this usually occurs uh, five to seven days after exposure to heparin. And some signs and symptoms of this can be pain, redness, swelling of the arm or leg, uh, bruising as well. Okay, now moving on to the second case, we have a 50-year-old woman presenting to a &E with a sudden onset right-sided chest pain and shortness of breath. She describes the onset to be quite sudden and rates the pain at about 8 to 10 in severity. The patient reports coughing up some blood. She's normally quite active uh, with no recent reported surgery, illnesses, or bleeding conditions. And her past medical history includes arthritis skin, chronic kidney disease, and previous uh, deep vein thrombosis. On examination, uh, the patient's tachycardic, tachypnic, uh, her blood pressure is 140 over 75. She's apyrexic, crackles and decreased breath sounds are heard upon auscultation. Her BMI is 30. So uh, feel free to pause the video here uh, and uh, see if you can identify some risk factors, uh, any differentials and how you may proceed with uh, the patient. Uh, also, one question to, uh, to ask, what do you think is the most likely ECG changes to be seen uh, in regards to the uh, suspected diagnosis? Okay, moving on. So this patient has a pulmonary embolism, which is when emboli, usually thrombi, that builds up from veins, lodge in the pulmonary vasculature, causing respiratory dysfunction. So some of the signs and symptoms you may see, pleuritic chest pain, shortness of breath, hypotension, uh, cough, hemoptysis, which is coughing up blood, a tender and swollen calf, which may indicate uh, DVT as well, dizziness, syncope, fever. So uh, hy hypotension, dizziness, and syncope are more towards a, uh, pointing towards a massive PE uh, that causes some systemic uh, compromise. Uh, risk factors for pulmonary embolism include an age of more than 60, uh, taking the oral contraceptive pill, uh, hormone replacement therapy, obesity, significant past medical history of um, infectious disease or inflammatory conditions, uh, an erythematous and warm calf, long distance travel, and thrombophilias. So some of these risk factors you can see are quite similar uh, to deep vein thrombosis. Uh, moving on to how you uh, proceed with the patient's uh, management. Again, we have a two-level PE well score, which is similar to the uh, DVT well score with some changes. So again, you would look for clinical features, uh, signs and symptoms suggestive of DVT, and that would be assigned a score of three. Alternative diagnosis is less likely than PE. Uh, that would be three as well. A heart rate above 100 beats per minute immobilization for more than three days or surgery in the previous four weeks, previous DVT or PE, hemoptysis, and active cancer ongoing treatment uh, or uh, in the past six months or pal palliative. So a score of more than four is um, pointing towards PE. A score of four or less, PE is said to be less likely. Okay, following on from the scoring system, we have the management of PE. So if patients are determined to uh, be quite likely for a PE, the first line investigation would be a CT pulmonary angiogram. And if the CTPA cannot be arranged immediately, then start anticoagulant therapy. If patients are uh, scored to be less likely for PE, uh, then offer a D-dimer test with results available within four hours. If the test is positive, arrange an immediate CTPA and again, if the CTPA cannot be done immediately, commence with anticoagulant therapy. If the D-dimer results are negative, consider an alternative diagnosis. And for anticoagulant therapy treatment, uh, NICE recommends using apixaban or rivaroxaban, which is similar to how we would treat a DVT. So these are DOACs. Uh, and for second line treatment, uh, if patients cannot be put on DOACs, um, low molecular weight heparin can be used for at least five days, followed by dabigatran or adoxaban, uh, or the second uh, method of uh, treatment could also be low molecular weight heparin for five days, followed um, with uh, warfarin as well. 
for patients determined to have a massive PE, autoplase is the treatment of choice, and that's a tissue plasminogen activator. And as a side note, D-dimer is essentially a blood test, which uh, is measuring the fibrin degradation products. And D-dimer, uh, they're essentially small protein fragments that are present in blood, which come as a result of fibrinolysis of a clot, so breaking of the clot or the fibrin mesh. Moving on to differentials and complications of PE, respiratory causes such as asthma, pneumonia, bronchitis, and pneumothorax uh, may be considered. Cardiovascular disorders such as angina, myocardial infarction, pericarditis, or chest uh, or heart failure uh, can also be differentials. Other causes. Uh, anxiety, costochondritis, rib fracture, although they may have um, some pre, uh, preceding clinical history that may be relevant. Uh, complications include cardiac arrest and death. Untreated can be as high as 30%, and for patients uh, who are treated, about 5 to 8%. Bleeding risk uh, is quite high following treatment um, because you're using anticoagulant therapy, and this may um, exacerbate an unknown uh, underlying pathology that patients may have. Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, uh, like we mentioned before, is also uh, a complication associated with heparin use and that causes thrombocytopenia, so low platelet counts. Recurrent VTE, so patients who have had PE or DVT, they may be at a higher risk for future um, clots as well. Thank you for listening today. If you have any questions or any comments, feel free to leave them uh, below the video, we've included a few links uh, that lead to our uh, videos that we've done for clotting uh, and uh, thrombophilias in particular, which may be useful. And also for the questions asked during the, the PowerPoint, feel free to answer them below in the comments and we'll get back to you with the answers.